Hey guys, welcome back to the Steel Form. Today we're doing a video on one of our favorite components. It is the beam nailer holes component. It's going to allow you to put all those spaced holes, whether it's in the flange, the web, both. We're going to teach you how to do that, teach you the ins and outs of this com component, all that and more today on the Steel Form. I actually don't know what I'm doing. That's just the way of it at this point. I don't understand. Oh, I hit a skip. Hey! New for 2018. They fixed it. So I'll have to cut that part out. Yes, I guess you will. So we're going to be putting some nailer holes in on the top flange and also in the web of a bunch of beams. One of the things you need to be aware of when you're dealing with nailer holes is it does not automatically determine what the gauge of that beam is. So you are going to need to look that up in advance. I find the easiest way to do that is to select the beam itself and then you're gonna hit the shape info tool. If you don't have that on your toolbar, you need to get that on your toolbar. It's a plugin that comes with SDS and it's only accessible by way of putting it on your toolbar. It is under, I think BV plugins or something like that. Uh, and we can get into that in another video too, but you run that and it's gonna bring up the information for that particular member size. Our gauge is three and a half, which just so happens to be the default for nailer holes anyway. But we need to verify that anyway, because we are gonna be doing some other sizes. So we run the nailer holes component, and you would set your web, set your hole sizes the way you want, which we need three eighth inch holes, three and a half inch gauge, two foot on center staggered. Now at this point, I'm gonna to note to you guys that the stagger that is defined in this component is the same one that the AISC uses. Now, a lot of engineers have the mistaken understanding of stagger holes as two feet on center staggered indicates that the holes at farthest are two feet away from each other, uh, whereas it's actually the nearest two holes are two feet on center. So if you have flange holes that are on other opposite sides of the flange, there you'll have one on the far side of the flange and then two feet away from that one on the near side will be another hole. So make sure that you're careful about which definition you're following. If the engineer does not specify, a lot of times you'll want to send an RFI because you'll get it wrong if you have a lot of these. But do follow the, that AISC definition when you're using this component. And in general, you should follow that so the engineers learn to be better about specifying their holes. <laughs> yeah. Now, I am going to do this one a little bit inefficiently just to demonstrate a couple different ways of adding these. And then we're going to do the rest of the chain, OK? Okay. So we're going to plug this in on a single beam and see that, yes, I get the holes I'm after. However, I have, lose my view there. I have a slight problem. I needed that to be on multiple beams. Now I could put it in one at a time, but since I've already plugged it in on the one, I am going to drill down in the tree and find that component, okay, and select it. Now that I have selected it, I can right click and do a copy component and slap it on another beam and it will plug them in. And I can go down the chain and just click the rest of them. I'll do one more just so you can see that it does work. And until I hit escape, I can add that component to multiple beams. Now, can you copy that or can you just add that component to multiple beams right off the, from the back? Yes, and that was gonna be my next move. So I'm gonna just select a couple beams that I know are gonna need the rest of these. So while you can't always multi-edit and you can't with nailer holes, you can multi-add. So as long as I know going in that all of these are gonna need it, and it does remember all of my settings from before. Now they all have the nailer holes shot in all at once. Now, recently on the forums, there was a discussion about being able to select all of the beams up with the same gauge. Now that is possible, you can use, and if you go to the forum, you'll be able to find that thread I'll try to provide a link to it down in the show notes. But you can select, use an advanced selection filter to grab all the beams based on their gauge. So if you want to run that advanced selection, select all the beams that have a gauge three and a half, run the component, and then run it again on the any ones that are left over, you can do that to make this process a little bit faster. That is an awesome tip, and I need to learn how to do that. So let's say was it this one or was this one. Yeah, this one. Okay, so if I copy the component over to this one and my gauge is incorrect, 
Oh. I did not escape out of it like I was trying to. All right, so now if I edit this, and what I did was I accidentally copied the component onto the same member twice and the holes tried to overlap each other. That was a little error it just threw. So I got to remove one of those. So at this point, now that I've removed it, on the correct one, I just need to change that gauge to five and a half inches for the top flange. So now I've got the correct gauge. Uh, and now that I'm looking over at my contract drawings, I also see that I don't need the web holes on this elevation of beam. So I can just drop that off. And now I've got it exactly the way that I want it. Now, do be careful. This, this isn't one of those components that updates based on member size. So you have to watch out. And when you first get to use these, you have to play with them a little bit and get to understand what it's intelligent about, what it's going to make changes based on, and what it's not. Um, and if you find a component that you really like, uh, but it's got a setting that's a little bit weird, head over to that SDS2 forum or the SDS2 subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash SDS users and just reach out to other users. You know, a lot of times there are, you don't know how to edit components, but we do and we can make that fix for you relatively quick, quick. All right, so dialog settings, you've got graphical, which will be checked automatically if you start messing with the holes. But if, uh, if you cl click on it and just move that hole or change that whole group, just like with a connection, it's going to go graphical. It's all the stuff is still going to stay there, but now it doesn't have that intelligence anymore. Right. Right. So you can set your top flange, bottom flange, and the web holes. Uh, you can set your gauge. You can set the bolt diameter. Now, again, be aware, bolt diameter is for every hole that this component puts in. So if you have different holes in top flange, bottom flange, or web, you're going to need multiple components thrown in for each different hole diameter. Yeah. And but also that's actually a space. good tip too. If, if for whatever reason your holes aren't evenly spaced or they've got a wonky spacing or you get something that interrupts them, you can add and stack multiple components on top of each other to still get the desired results. Yes. Okay, so you've got options for oversized round holes. You can do a plug weld hole. I believe as far as a plug weld hole, that's really just going to be a hole that won't be matchable, which eliminates the... Uh, scariness of if you're putting in web holes and you've got a beam that frames into the web and you don't want one of those holes to accidentally line up with a clip angle and punch a hole through to that clip angle that's one way to keep that safe for yourself yeah using that plug weld hole in general with nailer holes is probably a pretty good idea because you don't want that thing to automatically be matching right right and i mean it also sets a bolt type so um, you can, if you're going to really model in the wood. This is more useful if, if those holes are matching to a piece of concrete and you need to put epoxy anchors through it. There you go. Well, yeah, and I guess it depends on how you do your epoxy anchors. The way that we do them is we use sag rods as anchor rods and do an anchor bolt sort of a thing. Well, it really depends on the client, what the, what the client wants. We, yeah. We yeah, it depends. But yeah, I suppose if you're not going to do them that way, you could create an epoxy type of bolt and put that in with that. Uh, you can choose to stagger or not stagger, which will just give you pairs going down the beam. Set your spacing. You can have the minimum distance from each end. So if you've got a lot of stuff that you need to get past first, if you're talking bottom flange holes on a beam that runs over top of a column and you need to have a certain distance to clear that cap plate, you don't want those holes to start right away, whereas on the top, you might want them right up near the end. That allows you to get that offset there. It's also a great way that setting is if you just need to shift these holes a little bit because they're, it's running into something, but you don't want to specify the whole thing. You just need to move it a little bit. You tweak those dimensions until you get what you want. I mean, you know, nailer holes are such a wherever they start, they start thing that you just play with those dimensions a little bit until that hole no longer interferes with what you need it to feel clear of. And then you've got right there the, the, the distance for the web holes, how, how far down to the first row, and then the row spacing after that. Yeah, row spacing after that. Now, now, does that just run out if it basically senses the depth of the beam yes. that you're talking about? Can yeah, it just... goes to the bottom of the beam. Now, I'm just going to plug in something kind of absurd here just to see what it does. But So the one thing, though, is you will only get two rows. So... Uh 
So you need to stack multiples. Of yes, things. you'll need to stack multiples of multiple components if you need to get more than two rows of bolts in. Okay. Now you can even see right here, oh, I, it looked like it was a little tighter further away. But so if I needed to adjust that, let's say that that was actually hitting my stiffener, I would just come in and change that to something else, say 10, just to push it further away. And now I've adjusted those holes to be further away from the end of my beam. Perfect. Beautiful. Okay. Well, guys, that's it for this component. Let us know if you have any questions on it. We'll uh, be chasing the developers of this component for some additional features, maybe sensing the actual gauge of the beam. But don't be afraid, too, to go ahead in there and, and delve into that code yourself. Ask for a little bit of, of help on how you might want to change it. Now, on this one specifically, do we really want it to sense the gauge? Probably not, because it, it's not something necessarily where you're using the traditional gauge all the time. Those holes can be a lot closer to the flange for nailer holes. Um, and also, if you're matching to concrete, a lot of times the engineer will specify that distance and that gauge. It's not just whatever the, the beam has. So there could be another component introduced that just matches the gauge. And that's the power of these things, of components in general, is that you can get them, tweak them a little bit without having to go through SDS2 and have them change the code of the whole program or 16 dialog boxes. You have the component that you need, it does what you want it to, and all of that functionality is built in, it's flexible, and it's powerful. So make sure that you're using these components in your work. You should probably be using one every day. If you're doing something repetitive, look for those components. There's probably one out there that, that suits your needs. If there's not, talk to some people on those forums about getting one made. You'll save that money time and time again. And if you share those around, everybody's going to be grateful. They're going to give you their components as well. So be a part of that community and we'll all help each other out. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in to this video on component beam nailer holes. Hope you learned a little bit. Hope that you're going to use this in your day-to-day -day life to make your life better. We're going to be doing some more videos in the upcoming days, so make sure to comment below. Let us know what components you'd like to see uh, demonstrated and what questions you might have maybe on this one or on upcoming videos. Also, if there's a component that you would love to see produced, let us know. We have some of those resources available to create some great components. We'd love to do that with you in the future. So make sure to come back and see us. Hit those like and subscribe buttons, and we'll see you soon on the Steel Forum.